Welcome to the Practice You podcast. My name is Elena Brower. Together, we'll explore and enjoy content and conversations around mastering transitions. In our relations, our wellness, our careers, our families, and especially in our missions and visions. You are invited to learn and love and listen with me. Welcome to Practice You. Welcome back to the podcast. I have one of my best friends here today, Sasha Lewis. Sasha is the founder of Flavor Pill, one of my first students at Vera Yoga back in the day. Yes, yes. Sasha's also the co-founder of Flavor Pill and also the co-founder of Everyman, which I think is going to be the bulk of what we talk about today, the men's work, because I, I feel like everyone is longing to learn hmm. what it's about. And every time somebody posts about it, Mark Holtzman posted about his experience last weekend up at Bracebrook Lodge in New York. And, you know, so many people are really curious and want to be a part of this. And the men are finally feeling like gathering. Hmm. So I'm excited to talk about that. Um, you and I met in, I'm, I want to say the early 2000s. Yeah. That's when I first started doing yoga. Right. And your office was two doors down. Yeah. From Vera, from your, your studio. And strangely in the same building as James, although you guys never met because you were in two different elevator banks. Yes, exactly. You started coming to class and it was in 2010 that we did the great lawn. Yep. 2010. So, so get this, Sasha comes over to me at the end of class and he's like, hey, I think we're going to do a class with like 10,000 people on the Great Lawn and I'm just wondering if you'd be keen to teach it. And I was just like, oh, oh what? <laughs> yes, scared out of my mind. That was one of the most exalted experiences of my life. And hmm. even though we only got a few minutes into the class because there was a <laughs> threatening torrential, torrential thunderstorm. Oh, God. <laughs> It was it was so special. Yeah, it was. It was really special. And what I want to highlight though is your your facility in creating of Flavor Pill, an organization that would have that kind of strength mm. to gather 10,000 humans on the great lawn with yoga mats to practice yoga. Yeah. With the likes of me. Behind me and alongside me, I had Dharma Mitra. I had Maya Fines. Mm. I had, who else did I have? I had Lauren, was Lauren Imperato there? Yes. Ava Taylor. Ava Taylor was there. We had such a crew. Yeah. So beautiful. And, and I'll never forget it. And we had Reggie Watts as our oh MC. Oh my God. Who's now like who's the biggest deal ever. Totally legit now, which is beautiful. I'm so he, happy for him. So happy. I remember when I asked him to do it, I'm like, hey, Reggie, we're going to do 10,000 people doing yoga. And we thought you'd be a great MC. He's like, that sounds really weird. I'm in. <laughs> and he did the best job. He did the best job. And I think I paid him. Sorry, Reggie, for calling us out. But I think I paid him $500 for oh, it. Oh, bless. And because he was new to the scene. He just moved to New York, I believe. And he was you know, always ready to do something kind of crazy and weird. And he, he kind of stole the show because he did we steal didn't the show. get to do a lot of yoga right. because of the rain. So he ended up entertaining us for quite some time. And we also had Buddy Wakefield, right. three-time world champion spoken word artist, do a, a 10-minute set, right. which was also really special Exalted. as well. Exalted. Yeah. So it was, it was a fun, wild experience. We did something, I think, that kind of it had Maybe never been done. Never been done. And it definitely put a spark out in the world, I right. think, as far as these bigger collective yoga experiences. So I'm proud of that. And I've always wanted to go back and get a full class in. Dude, um, we will so do it someday. Maybe one day that'll, that'll manifest. I think it will. We'll do it someday. Yeah. There are a couple other things I want to touch on. First, why don't we just get Reggie and, uh, and take us all out to dinner? Can I do that? Yeah, let's do it. Let's. Can you get in touch with him? Yeah, if he answers my emails, he's he's pretty big time now. He's, he's very famous. Yeah, he's doing great. I'm so proud of him. He deserves so, it. So, so happy for that he guy. Is an, he is one of the most talented people I've ever seen. All right, tell his ass that we want to take him out to a really nice dinner. Okay. I'm buying. Yes. And that's what's up. Okay. Uh, yeah, he lives in LA and he's, he's also Mr. Fit. He's dropped like literally 80 pounds. What? And he has like got a six pack and he's a... a a big muscle guy now. Before you leave here, I need to see a picture. Okay. <laughs> that is mind blowing to yeah, me it's right pretty now. Amazing. 
Second thing, I do want to back up a little bit and talk about the MoMA. Yeah. Because the first time yoga was taught in a museum setting was with the Pipilati Reese exhibit in the atrium of the MoMA in 2008, I think it was. Wow. And yeah. Rothman, Michael Rothman, poem.tv on Instagram, he's the one who got that beautiful film. Yeah, that's a beautiful video of you. Of me just practicing like handstand yeah. before the class, but he shot it slow-mo. Yeah. And behind me was Pipilati's video install, which mm -hmm. was literally the full length of the atrium, which is a very tall space, tall mm -hmm. ceiling. And uh, it was one of the it was one of the first kind of yoga videos that was set to something you know musically totally different than what was expected. It was a piece by the Cinematic Orchestra. Yeah, beautiful song. Yeah, and it was that that experience really did change things. I feel I'm not we're not I'm not patting ourselves on the back. I promise. But <laughs> if you're listening, you know there was a first, and that was it. Yeah, that definitely was the catalyst, and I think and that was your idea too. Yeah, the MoMA we had had a relationship with for years, and we had done parties and fun things. Paula. We, yeah, Paolo Sanzo. Shout yeah. out. She's uh, wonderful. I just saw her recently. Yeah, We love you. I told her a few years before that, like, hey, I would love to do yoga here. She's like, that's a great idea, and it's never going to happen. And I was like, <laughs> okay, well, we'll see, maybe one day. And right. then uh, the Pipilati Vist exhibit, she had actually said, the artist, hey, this is something well, I want people to move in this space. I yes. want them to maybe even do yoga. Mm -hmm. So then they reached out and said, hey, we've got a couple of weeks left of this exhibit. And we thought maybe we'd want to do some yoga here. And we jumped on the opportunity. And it was it was a special moment in time. And then we ended up doing it again out in the garden right? Um, as well. And right. we just did that series has now become Art of Yoga, which, which we did at the Guggenheim yep. with you just yep. a, f a few weeks ago. Yeah. Um, first time yoga has ever been done at the Guggenheim in the 60 year history. Um, and we're excited to see that grow. And, and now, you know, eight, 10 years later, that's a program that we've done in 10 to 15 different museums across the country. Wow. The director of the Guggenheim was so, so keen and so sweet at the end. He was like, I can't wait to see you again and see this again. Yeah. It makes sense. It's a great use of these cultural cathedrals. You know, they're spiritual mm -hmm. and in nature. Um, what they've been brought to us to do, right, is for us to convene and connect and be inspired. And so mm -hmm. the idea of bringing yoga into those spaces and taking advantage of them on their off hours in particular. So, you know, we do it in the morning before the museums open. It's a beautiful testimonial to the space and it's an offering to the community. And it's also just really cool. I mean, it's, it's super a, you cool. know, whether we've got our classical trio playing or we've got our DJ, it's a fun, unique kind of like epic experience that none of us, you know, probably would have imagined could happen. And when we do it, you know, it's, it's the best. I mean, it's all for the gram at the end of the day. Let's it's get real. It's the best. All for the gram. <laughs> yeah. I have to say, aside from Just it being kidding. for the gram, which is true. Yeah. There's, there's, it's there's, our I mean, favorite yearbook, really. Yeah, there you go. That's a great way to it's say our, it. It's our phone yeah. yearbook. But I love it because I get to go into these spaces with these incredible artists mm. and talents and just listen for their vibes and mm. their resonance in the space where their art is being shown. Yeah. That's what I love. And every time I go and I do one of these, I make sure that I am very up on the artist and I've done my homework and I, I like to reference the artist and the art in the class. Yeah, you're great at that. Which I love to yeah. do. Bringing those two worlds together, I think is part of the sort of ethos of Flavor Pill. We've always been about, you know, how can culture become something that's more accessible? Yeah. How can it be inclusive? Mm. You know, how can we mash something up like yoga and art or DJs and dance parties and museums and, and bring those worlds together and see what happens? Like, we don't know. Maybe it's amazing. Maybe it actually doesn't really work. But it's always amazing. But it's usually been pretty good. <laughs> yeah. And we've had a lot of fun. It's interesting because as a kid, I grew up two blocks away from the Guggenheim. So my dad, who's 84, shout out to my dad, he came. He, did, he didn't practice. Um, no, but us, he watched. But he watched, um, and he was so intrigued. And he, for years, tried to get me to go to the Guggenheim. And I always wanted to run across the street and go play basketball or park. play baseball in the park because I was more of a little jock than I was an artsy kid. Yep. And so now full circle, you know, 40-something years You're later. You're inviting him to the <laughs> Guggenheim. Inviting him to do yoga at the Guggenheim. Wow. So it's quite beautiful. And Very beautiful. Yeah, and I, I, I do 
uh, really honor the fact that these museums have been willing to work with us. And we have our quiet morning series where we do meditation at the moment. We're about to launch it at LACMA in LA. Oh, wow. And we're talking to the Tate Modern. And so there's yes. all these opportunities and it's great use of space totally. and community. And, you know, the fact that now wellness and yoga and particularly I think meditation is like modern and it's, you know, culturally almost cool in some ways. Yeah. It's a smart opportunity for the museums to bring in new audience and engage in a different way. And I'm glad that, you know, I can be a part of that for yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, the bottom line is that we know now that meditation, neurologically meditation decreases your age mm. straight up. Yeah. Like that's a very recent study. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm gunning for triple digits. So Lord. I've been meditating for 10 years. So hopefully that buys me I don't know, another decade. Let's do this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's do this. Come on. Let's live to 100 at least. Yeah. Um, I, I really want to focus on every man because yeah. I think that that is probably, of all the accomplishments that you have um, claimed in your life, aside from some of the best women I've ever known, <laughs> uh, is this co-founding this... I don't even know what you would call, how do you call every man? What is this organization? Organization is. Okay. That brings men together to do work together. Mm. And this is something I'm watching my boyfriend, James, go through. He has a men's group also that you were a part of at the beginning, I think. Yeah. It's not a technically an every man group, but it's a. Technically it is. And it is. It works, okay. We're in a transition of making it a full-fledged everyman group. I was wondering group. about, okay, yeah. great. So that makes perfect sense. So James is in an everyman group. Yes, he is. With <laughs> Every, me. And it's actually tonight. Yes, it is. Happens once a week. They're in there, guys. They're in there for three hours. Yeah, we go deep. Go super deep. And James, over the course of the last five years, he started, what, four years ago with you? Probably, yeah. About a year into his relationship with me. Yeah. That guy is more emotionally involved, evolved, pardon mm. me, more emotionally evolved than I am. And I like to think of myself as pretty <laughs> radical and in touch. And he's able to give voice to things that I don't even, I, I don't even have the capacity to feel at times. Mm. And he's the one who holds it together. He's the one who, who's become sort of the glue in our household. He even glues together Jonah's dad and Jonah. Mm. You, you, you can't even imagine the the benefits that James has gleaned from being a part of this group. So that said, talk to me about the genesis of this. Talk to the man who's listening mm. or the wife or girlfriend or sister or daughter of the man who might be listening and teach us what mm. this is. Yeah, well, thank you so much for all of those wonderful words about what we've done and how James has evolved and, you know, we create a container and James stepped in and has done everything on his own accord with some support and some challenges from us along the way. Mm -hmm. And I think that's part of what we're trying to create. Mm -hmm. you know, this is sort of the, the anti-guru in that way, yes. right? Because as, yes. as a yogi and as someone who uh, you and I danced that dance, you know, back in the early 2000s where there were these larger than life teachers that came into our lives and said they had all the answers and then ultimately, you know, they didn't, they didn't because they're just <laughs> human like us. And that's too much pressure for anybody. Yeah. Maybe except for, you know, Buddha and Jesus. Um, so mm -hmm. I think for us with every man, you know, what happened was it was a really simple Genesis and that my partner, Dan Doty, who's amazing, who should be on this podcast. D-A-N-D-O-T-Y. D-A-N-D-O-T-Y. Yes. Got you. He and I sat in a men's group, actually the one that James and I are currently sitting in. It's right. called the Brotherhood NYC. And we sat in a group together for about four years. This is dating back now six or seven years ago. And immediately when I met Dan, it was very clear that he had a special gift and he was really able to um, do this work at a level that um, was something unique. And so I kind of poked at him for a few years and said, hey, you are really gifted in this space. Mm. And just as you are as a yoga teacher, Dan is, you know, in teaching men. Mm. And I said, you know, this is something that you could bring to the to the world and um, I'd like to help. And so we danced around that for years. Um, life got busy. Um, you know, he had kids. He moved um, out to Bozeman. I got 
married, I got divorced, I had death in my family, I sold my business, um, and eventually we finally got to the point where we said, all right, we're going to do our first retreat. This was just two and a half years ago. I remember. And we leaned in and we had 16 guys come to this retreat, and it was unbelievable. It really, every guy, I, I use this word very carefully because it's a word that gets thrown a lot, around a lot, but it was transformational for every guy, including ourselves. And we all just looked at each other and said, this is something that has to get out in the world. Right. And so of those 18 guys that were there, like almost half of them are still very much involved in the organization, like mm. at a high level, mm. um, or helping us with our marketing, our production, our branding, um, any anything that they can bring to the table. Um, so it was just one of those moments and and from there it's now grown where you have over a hundred groups so like james and i sit on wednesdays um we have over a hundred groups across the united states we're now in canada and in australia that are every man groups that are um, wow yeah that are leading themselves you know it's a distributed um you know, uh, decentralized organization. So we give you the, the, the playbook and we said, here's your first 12 that weeks. That was the document that I edited. Of, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that you edited it. It doesn't surprise me. The listener might not know this, but I'm the editor of all the things. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. Well, you were an English, sure. English major, weren't you? No, uh -huh. actually I majored in textiles and apparel oh, okay. and art history. But, but you're but smarty pants. You I don't know Cornell, what happened. So. I don't know what happened. I edit everything for everyone. Yeah, it's really fun. Great. Yeah. Well, so there's a little Lena Stardust on on <laughs> every man. <laughs> so that work. so that document gets sent out to yeah. all these different potential group yep. leaders, yeah. and they then run with it. Yeah, and and it's working. You know, I mean, we actually have two thousand guys um, that are currently waiting to get into groups. <gasps> So we've got more, wow. more demand than we can currently manage. And so we're working on technology in which we can help those guys organize, find each other yes. and, um, and connect and start the groups. So, you know, uh, tell us the spelling of the website. I just want to make sure I have it because oh, yeah. people, if you're listening and you want to go look right now at the site, I'm sure it's worth your look, uh, E V R Y M A N dot yeah. com. So you're missing that second E again. I'll say it. It's E V R Y M A N dot com. It's very 2019. Yes. Oh, we couldn't afford to get the the, the, the correct spelling of every man. So oh, because was... somebody else had it. Yeah, you know, ten thousand dollars if you want to buy it's, it or something. I have to tell you, if, when you look at uh, an organization like Mindful M N D F L, yeah, the meditation studios in New York, this is perfect. Yeah, it it's works. Very timely. Yeah, you know, we got to keep it cool. Every man, so great. So you've got all these guys. You're going to get them in eventually. You're going to scale in some way. Are you looking for investors? If somebody's listening and they want to invest. Um, <laughs> you never know. Yeah, sure. I mean, you know, as your older sister. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, we are currently at, at that point with the organization where we okay. are. Um, we've we've already taken on some investors, people who really just guys who've come to our retreats oh. and have had this life changing experience and said, yeah. "Hey, I want to support you. What can I do?" Yeah. And and write checks. Um, so we've got a, a a list of people who are interested, and we're kind of organizing that from a you know, operations and legal perspective to be ready to take on investments. So Great. that is definitely the next stage. We're a B Corp, um, you know, so obviously we're socially driven in, in terms of our mission and what we're trying to do in the world. Um, and it's been, it's been incredible to see the work. We just got back this past weekend from a, a retreat up in the Berkshires again. Right. Um, Mark was there, Holtzman. Yeah, Mark Holtzman was uh, doing yoga. He taught the yoga. He taught the yoga. And he also took part. And he also completely took part. And he was um, just over the moon, excited and incredibly present in, in who he was and the way he offered yoga. So of the 60 guys that were there, wow. I would say probably... 30 to 40% had never done yoga at all. Like literally not even a down dog. Wow. Um, so it's one of the things and one of the reasons we call it every man is it's just that, right? It's not just for the, the woke millennial or the, you know, Upper East Side guy who can afford to do this sort of personal work and, you know, has had the, the, the benefit of time and resources to work on themselves, meditation or yoga. We get guys that are from all walks of life. Mm -hmm. We get guys that, have, you know, drive 20 hours in their car and sleep in their car to be there. Wow. Um, one of the guys in my group um, spent eight years in prison 
Um, another guy uh, drove up from Parkland um, and is really involved in the, yeah, in, the, in the community there and was really excited about bringing it back to Parkland because obviously they have a lot of a lot of healing healing to um, do. There was a, a a cop police officer from <gasps> Northern Massachusetts wow. there, um, and then you've got you know all walks of life there too. So that's part of what's so amazing about the work is when you put a group of strangers, a group of men particularly together. And you give them an opportunity to be open and to slow down and to connect to themselves and to others, you quickly realize how much more similar similar we are than different. And um, it's profound in that way. It really gives us all an opportunity to let go of all those, you know, sh shields and guards and layers that we put across ourselves or, you know, throw on top of ourselves in some way to protect and it gives us the opportunity to just be authentic and um, and be raw and and be emotional in a way that, you know, most of us have just, it's not been modeled. It's not been something that we've... It's been, not even condoned. Yeah. I mean, there's no way to learn this, you know. It's it's like emotional, it's like an emotional gym in some ways, what we've created, uh, particularly on the retreats. And guys walk out of there and they feel like yeah, they just ran a marathon. Yeah. You know, they feel exhilarated and revived and they also feel physically exhausted because yeah. they've never actually had that type of experience from an emotional perspective it's like a massive release oh it's huge yeah it's a very cathartic <clears throat> experience i'm feeling like maybe we should uh do one for teen boys selfishly when jonah hits for sure in a couple of years yes i mean that's part of the big vision with every man is to take this idea of men's work um, and emotional wellness for men and give that an opportunity to be at places like high schools and colleges, um, prisons. We're doing a lot of work currently. One of the, our main guys, Aaron Blaine, um, spent 10 years in the special um, forces. So we've been able to um, really connect to a military community, which for me as an, as a New York, you know, guy who is a progressive um, sort of liberal mindset, I have not hung out with guys from the military. So this was a really interesting edge. And I had all my preconceived notions about these guys. I'm like, why would you ever join the, the army? And who could you, who, who could possibly want to go out and do something like that? And of course, I was completely wrong. Aaron is particularly one of the most beautiful, heartfelt humans I've ever seen. Um, I mean, he will get up in front of a group and weep. Um, in front of these guys and just talk about mm. what this work has meant to him mm. and how it's changed his relationship with his wife and his son um, and saved his life in many ways um, because, you know, that is a very difficult transition to come back and be a civilian after spending years um, out there, you know, fighting for your country and fighting for your life. And the brotherhood that they create um, in the military is phenomenal. And it's actually, it, there's a resonance there in terms of what we're trying to create, right? Like we yeah. are packed creatures by nature and i think particularly men you know we're tribal we we want to feel that connection and uh outside of sports when you're in high school or if you're lucky enough to play in college that's not really something that we have culturally here and it doesn't so exist it doesn't exist yeah you know we're learned to be to be competitive and to crush each other as opposed to be collaborative and you know to connect create together and, and create and so that's what we really do and and that's much of the ethos of every man is to co-create you know, our, our retreat we just did this weekend is called Open Source. And the idea is that we're all collaborating. And all of the facilitators, people like myself and the guys that are part of the organization, we are leaning in and doing all the exercises the same way everyone else does. Mm. And, you know, we're being as emotional and raw as everyone else is that's showing up just for the first time. Yep. I have a few people that I want to send to you. When yeah, is the next retreat, do. first of all? Uh, the next one is at Joshua Tree. Um and it's the uh, last weekend of May. I think it's May 30th or May 31st. And there's they're all up on the website, and we're constantly adding new ones because we're just, we're getting a lot of demand, and it's exciting. Um, so, yeah, anyone who's out there, whether you're a mother, a, a, a wife, a man, a sister, uh, a sister, whomever it is, you know, if there's a man in your life that you think would benefit from this, I would say just. Just give them a good old push and get them in there. Because yeah. guys, you know, that we resist, right? What's How you doing? Oh, I'm doing good. Yeah, life's good. Okay, oh, really? What what's, what's good? What's really happening? And what's good? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and what really goes on, right? And then very quickly, 
guys realize that there's a lot underneath the surface that we need to work through. And, you know, we're not given permission to do that. And our fathers and our father's fathers didn't model any of that. And God bless mm -hmm. them. They did the best they could. They had a certain set of tools that yeah. did not include this information. Yeah. And, you know, even uh, with this work that we're doing here, you know, this every man predates toxic masculinity and, um, you know, all of the sort of conversation around that and the Me Too movement. You know, we started this um, before that became trending topics on Twitter and conversations that you're seeing in the media. And so now more than ever, there is this calling for men to say, hey, how are we going to evolve? What does it mean to be a man? How can we change the narrative? How can we learn these new tools? And there's not a lot of places to go. And I think particularly with men, we learn by doing and experiencing. And that's much of what the work is that we're doing here. We're creating a container. We're giving guys some guardrails. And then we're going out and letting them do whatever it is they need to do. And it can get messy. It can be uncomfortable. It can be beautiful. It can be joyous. But we're not trying to dictate to them, you know, here's the 10 things you need to do and, you know, speak, speak down to them. You know, we're giving guys just the opportunity to feel and talk about what their feelings are and then to really identify what it is that they want in their lives. And then they yeah. go do the rest, which is, you know, that empowerment too, I think is so important um, because you shouldn't be belittled or feel like, you know, you're less than because you don't know this. It's just a matter of like, hey, we're going to open up this whole new set of tools for you. And you go do the work every day in your life. And the transformation is amazing. I mean, I get women, particularly wives, good friends of mine who've called me up or emailed me. This makes me want to cry whenever I say it. And they say, you know, this is the man I always thought <gasps> I married. This <sighs> is the man I always wanted my children, um, you know, to be to the know. father and to know. And um, yeah, it's really just gorgeous to hear that. And it's like, you know, making that type of difference in someone's life yeah i mean it's it's as impactful as i've had an experience with so i feel super blessed um and i'm super i'm incredibly proud of what we've created and also the way the men have have shown up um you know it's beautiful to see men be raw and authentic and open and messy and confused and sad and fearful and angry you know, for most men, you know, th things like feeling your sadness and your anger and your fear and expressing that, you know, somatically is a really important tool that we can evolve, we can, we can learn, but we need someone to teach us that, yes. you know, so hopefully that's this next generation. We have a lot of fathers that are coming, a lot of guys in their 30s and 40s, and, you know, they say again and again, one of the most exciting things I'm taking from this experience is that I can go teach this to my kids. And that's just like, you know, the drop the mic moment of like, okay, we're going to, we're going to do something here. That's going to be really meaningful. When you hear a father say that he wants to teach this to his kids for the listener, what is he referencing? Hmm. Is he referencing a level of honesty that has yet to emerge in his house? What exactly is he talking about? If you can put it into words. Yeah, I think there definitely it's that honesty, it's that authenticity, you know, the, uh, things like authenticity and vulnerability, those words get thrown a lot, yes. thrown around a lot these days, you yes. know, there are a lot of Instagram posts and a lot of conversations. And I think um, the idea that yes, as a man, it's okay to be vulnerable, it's okay to not know, it's okay to not have to have all the answers. It's okay to be scared or angry, or fearful of something that those are those are not poisonous. In fact, they can be powerful emotions if we understand them. Mm. Um, th that, you know, we don't have to win and achieve at all costs, that we can be collaborative and we can be um, scared and soft and, and, and we can uh, not know all the answers. You know, those are things that as a, I know for myself as a young boy, like not really conversations that were part of the, my narrative at all and you know look at today i mean i didn't grow up with the internet and i didn't grow up with the, the way media portrays what it means to be successful and who you're supposed to be as a yeah. man so there's even more pressure now can you imagine that we didn't even have a, a cell phone until we were in our 20s yeah and a beeper for that i'll hit you on your hip <laughs> <laughs> hit me on my hip yeah exactly oh my gosh that was for you, James. So great. 
authenticity and honesty. So these men get to go home to their homes and they get to finally, after a long time, say, you know, I don't have the answer to this question, my child. You know, I have been an asshole, my mm-hmm. child. Mm-hmm. I was a jerk when I did that these many years ago. I didn't know how to talk to you about this particular matter. I was in the dark. Yeah. I felt afraid and didn't want to let you down. Things like that. Yeah, absolutely. I think, and also one of the things that we hear again and again is like, I'm going to commit and I am committing more time to my family, right? Because I think as men, we are programmed to be providers, right? And so work ultimately becomes a priority for us. And sometimes it's bigger than our family because ultimately that's how we express our value to our family. So that's fine and it's important and we all understand the value of that. And at the same time, we all know you know, spending time with your family and your children and just fellow humans overall is what we all yearn most, more than anything. Yeah. And it's where we feel that deeper sense of connection and where we really can be present. And I yeah. think that's another part of it is this idea that men can be present in a situation with their family, with their coworkers, um, you know, in difficult moments. And that often is hard for men because if you're not connected to your emotions, you're not, you're present with your thoughts. You're trying to solve the problem. You know, how do I figure, yeah, how do I figure my way out of this? How do I get from point A to point B as quickly as possible as as opposed to like, how do I have empathy and emotional connection to this other person, whether it's my son or my daughter or my wife or the person that's, you know, I reports to me at work. My husband. Yeah. Or my husband. Thank you very much. For my friends who are listening. Absolutely. Yeah. And so with that, that new tool that you get when we do this work, you know, you get to say, okay, look, I can be present in this conversation. I don't have to try to solve the problem. I don't have to try to get this done so I can move on to the next task because I've got to provide and deliver in the ways that it's always been told to me. That's what it means to be a man. And so we slow down, right? And we open up and we connect and and we're basically teaching ourselves just how to be full, as we talk talk about it, full spectrum humans, right? Like a whole human. So it's not just the intellect. It's not just the physical because that's where men go. It's also the emotional. I will say that when James, when we're going through a hard moment and, you know, he feels like he's right. I feel like I'm right, whatever. We've come to a place because of this work, I'm certain, where we can laugh so much more easily, more more swiftly Mm. at ourselves. But the what you just said about the slowing down of things mm. and him just looking at me and saying, you know what, I am hearing you mm. loud and clear. I don't know exactly what to say right now or to do right now, but I just want you to know that I'm actually really hearing you. That, in a funny way, seems to solve almost everything. Right. 99.9% of things are solved by me feeling heard. Now I get to hand that over to him when mm-hmm. I'm, you know, able to do it and be present he has more practice yeah (laughs) which is like i'm a little bit jealous and i should probably organize some every woman situation because we need it too yeah absolutely well funny you say that because we've now seen groups including my wife is in a group currently so maybe you can get down with her i am gonna get down with her. yeah and um they're not officially called every woman groups um but they are definitely taking um cues from us and we're helping them along. And there's probably three or four of them. There might be more um, that are, you know, inspired by the work we're doing and say, hey, you know, we need this too. And listen, at the end of the day, we're all humans. We're all trying to make sense of this crazy experience that is the human life. And we all need these skills and we need to be supported and we need to be challenged and we need to create the space for them, yeah. right? So much of it is just the, it's like, you know, this, it's like yoga. You show up, you get on the mat you and you do the practice. And by doing that, you evolve and you connect deeper to who you are and who you want to be and what you really need in your life. And so by creating that container every week where we show up, you know, more times than not for each other and whatever it looks like, you know, we're, it's like going to the gym. It's reps, right? And that's one of the things that guys get, right? Because guys love to go to the gym. They like to take care of their bodies, or at least some of the, us do. And if and if you don't, you feel like you should be doing it because you can understand and you can see the tangible results, and mm. you also know that that's valued in our culture. Right. So this is this is an emotional gym, right? This is an emotional moment of our opportunity for us to hone those skills and and build those muscles. 
And yeah, that's why women, I think, are, are connecting to this work too, which is great. I mean, ultimately, what do we want to be? We want to be every human. Yeah. Right. And we yeah. want to have women right. doing the same work in the way that serves them. And we want to bring men and women together. We've started to do now co-ed groups and oh, workshops, neat. which have been incredible. I bet. Yeah. I mean, we did a group um, actually at Wellspring when oh, we were yeah. together. Um, Wanderlust Wellspring. Wellsp yeah. Wanderlust Wellspring. Palm Springs, yeah. October. Yeah. We were there. See you there. And yeah. It's coming back. Right. Yep. And we had the first time, this is the first time I was ever in a facilitation um, position as with men and women. And we did our basic work that we do, and we had an opportunity for men to kind of mirror each other. We'd get men close to each other. We call it an A-B line. And we asked them certain prompts. So we said, yeah. if you really knew me, you'd know that. Ooh. And we asked them for 60 seconds to say those things that are maybe uncomfortable, particularly to another man and somebody they don't know. And we had the women watching them, right? So they would just watch this experience. And at the end, we did it for about 10 minutes. We got back into a circle and the first woman raises her hand and she says, this is the most beautiful display of humanity as I've ever seen in my life. And I just walked out. I was like, I'm done. That's it. We've reached, we've reached <laughs> Kill our me now. peak. Yeah. Take me. And, uh, and yeah, we, you know, people started to cry and yeah. other women expressed s similar feedback. And it was just incredible to see like even that just small glimpse of a man being vulnerable and open and receptive and connecting to each other in this way. Listening. Was, yeah, it meant so much to the women too. So it, yeah, they, I mean, I think it's all part of our sort of healing journey that we're on collectively yeah. as, as humanity, you know, yeah. we're evolving and we're going in the right direction. You know, I mean, you know no this, question. you've been doing this work for 25 years now too. And it's like, you think about where we were when we were, back in the 70s and 80s and this stuff was super esoteric and yeah. was not you know not something that was even available in any mainstream sort of way and now we're having these types of conversations and these these types of you know and it's not just every man there's so many amazing organizations out there and so many communities that are really digging in and doing this personal growth work and yeah. evolving who, what it means to be humans and um, and I think you know we're we're needing that obviously because there's a lot of other th other things that are happening out in the world and we need we need to balance that. Yeah, evolutionarily, I feel we are now basically turning the page on World War II. Mm -hmm. Is what I feel mm. because the parents that raised us, you know, we were born in the seventies, sixties and seventies. The parents that raised us were raised by parents who had endured that war. And you had to really steel yourselves and be S-T-E-E-L. You had to really like stand strong and not freak out and not cry. And, you know, there was barely enough food on the table and all these various restrictions for ammunitions, like so many things were happening. And I feel like now finally we're out of that uh, paradigm and, and turning the page. Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, I talked to that, about that with my father recently, who's who's very upset with the current political situation yeah. here in the country. Yeah, because he lived through World War II and he's Jewish, yeah. so he's you know we lost many family members um, during that time, mm. and he was um, you know completely terrified. I'm sure as a young boy, as a young Jewish boy, like what's going to happen, you know, and so that trauma is deep. Have you right. ever had him at an Every Man event? I've been trying to get him to go. Um, oh, it would be had... so good for him to cry. I'm sure he's holding all that fear yeah. in there. Gosh. Yeah, you're making me cry thinking about that. Sorry. Um, Dan, uh, one of the co-founders, so there's four co-founders of Every Man now, um, and Dan's father came most recently uh, to one of our retreats, and it was just so profound. And the gift that it was, not only for Dan and his father, the healing that they did, which was so Everybody intense, else saw but it. But everyone else. I just got <laughs> a big wave of it. There are tears <laughs> filling my eyes right now. There wasn't a dry eye in the I'm room sure. when the two of them were in the circle talking about how much they love each other, how much they want to forgive each other. Um, and yeah, you know, we all yearn a deeper connection to our fathers. Yeah. And you're right. I think we are, you know, generationally coming out of that darkness and that fear. And of course, now it's being drummed up again um, with what we're looking at, you know, from a political situation. And so I think that's even more of a reason for us to all, you know, dig in and yeah. say, hey, you yeah, know, yeah. like we had to approach this in a different way. A very different you way. Know, we're, we're, we've learned from our history. We're more evolved. Um, and we're, we're willing to do the personal work on ourselves to make sure that we can support 
each other and the world so that we're not going to go into those types of atrocities that we saw before. You know, we never again, right? That, that, those never things again. cannot happen, even though often they are happening in other places in the world that we're not wanting to sort of see and, and, and recognize. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, um, it's not a simple equation, right? To find that inner peace for ourselves and then be able to transfer that out into the world. I, I feel very strongly, however, that the work that you're doing is absolutely critical mm. and who, whomever can get uh, associated with it, exposed to it, engaged with it, I think is uh, deeply benefiting. Yeah, I do. I appreciate that. And I agree with you. This is one of the thing, few things in my life and the other uh, referencing some of the stuff we talked about earlier on, yeah. you know, the yoga, like bringing that to the world and to the masses, not to say I did that, but you know, my small effort. You know. had an idea, my friend. Yeah. And I'm, I appreciate that. And I'm, I'm grateful that I was able to have that opportunity and continue to, I yeah. think, you know, these ancient practices and getting us back into ourselves and yeah. back into connecting with others in authentic ways. It's vital. I mean, we all know what we're dealing with, with technology. You know, mm. the average person mm. is spending 10 hours a day in front of a screen. Yeah. I am probably guilty of that most of my sure. work days. Um, so if you were awake, you know, 16 hours or 18 hours a day, that means half of our waking life is in front of a screen. That is not what we were built to do as humans. So, you know, meaningful connections, whether it's doing yoga or men's work or meditating yeah. or looking at art or listening to music or you know connecting to community or just having a, a walk in the park with someone you love like these are important essential things that we have to get back to yeah. and i think that's why things like every man are becoming something that is you know, more culturally acceptable it's becoming something that you know we've got thousands of guys that want to join now um, because you know, we're hurting in that way. We're not, we're, we're unbalanced as humans. And yeah. so we're looking for things to recalibrate. Um, yeah. and, and it works, you know, if you're willing to commit to it and you're willing to put a couple hours a week into it or whatever the time is that you have, you know, you can see that change and, and, um, you can, you know, be that change, which is exciting, you know, too. It's, it's not, it's, this is not some insurmountable thing that we have to deal with. The change is, is, is in our hands if we want to go out and take it and, and do the work. Yeah. We've certainly benefited as a family hmm. from James's work. Oh, that makes me feel yeah. a lot of love for you guys. You should. Yeah, and James is a wonderful man, and he's a great example of the yeah. work because when he first got there, I'm assuming he'll be okay with me saying this, you know, he couldn't really connect to his anger, and he always wanted to placate people and others and he wasn't really wanting to challenge others and he you know he he felt sort of diminished and it's, i think somewhat small in yeah. relationship to who he is he's this beautiful strong you know intelligent man um and he really dug in and started to unravel some of those things and you know we all have trauma in our life right we can have major traumas horrible things you know yeah deaths, accidents, illnesses, and we can also have micro trauma, um, you know, all these little things that happened to us as we were younger and things mm -hmm. that we couldn't defend ourselves or didn't, couldn't understand. And sometimes those are worse. It was like death by a thousand cuts. And so, cause they accrue. Yeah. And we can't identify with yeah. them. It's not like, Oh, I understand, you know, Oh my, you know, I know I'm, what caused this. Right. Oh, my sister passed away or I got ill and you can understand that as a trauma or I had a terrible accident, but all those little cuts, it's like, well, where are those? And so, you know, going back and starting to unravel some of those and look at them and starting to create the space to let them go and honor them for what they were. Right. These are also the things that you know, bring us to our highest selves because they're challenges and we overcome them and we learn from them. Mm. Um, so yeah, just giving ourselves the space and the container to do that, right. To feel safe with other men um, and other humans just in general, right. To say we can have those conversations. So instead of just hanging out and talking about, you know, who won last night's game or what's on the front page of the the, the, the news today, um, you know, to go out and say, hey, man, how are you feeling? How the fuck <laughs> yeah. are you? For What's real? really going on? When's yeah. the last time you had, you know, a beautiful night with your wife or you spent time with your kids or, you know, how come you are, you know, on your Instagram at two in the morning or smoking weed, you mm. know, every day? Mm. You know, what are you avoiding? What's what's hurting inside of you? And, yeah. you know, and 
and they all want that that yeah. opportunity they just don't know what's out there so that's what i think we're trying to do and and it's, what's beautiful is that men are really leaning into it it's not just a couple of woke guys or cool people who go to Burning Man or, you know, the yogis that are like, okay, I want to do the work. These are truck drivers and, you know, fathers of four that are living in rural neighborhoods and police officers and former convicts and gay and straight and Muslim and Jewish. And, you know, it's, it's all denominations. And that's also, I think, really important too, because, you know, men are at the at the cause, at the root of so much of the problems that we face, so much of the violence and corruption and the things that, you know, we are hurting from societally. Yeah. And yeah. so to see men come together and, and, and work together and hold each other's hands um, in a meaningful, loving way and, and support challenge each other. Each other. And, yeah, I mean, we, and that's part of it, you know challenge and support each other because we need a good old kick in the ass too. And, you know, you know, an old dog doesn't learn new tricks easily. So, you know, they, we need that support we need that accountability. A big yeah. part of what we do is really just accountability. Like, yeah. Hey, how are we incrementally making strides to be more of that full human that we know we're capable of? I'll never forget when James first started. And then I have three questions for you. But James first started, he couldn't even be friends with a guy. Mm -hmm. Like, couldn't stand men, mm -hmm. particularly white men. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, he really yeah. couldn't. Yeah. And what was such a friend of the ladies, basically, he ended up now is one of the best friends to his male friends I've ever seen. Yeah. He challenges me. All the, like literally challenges me all the time in our relationship and other realms and is a, is a changed man. Mm. Yeah. When we first went out on dinner, our first date tonight, when you introduced me to him, I yes. said to him, I don't really trust you, man. I don't, I, I, I don't see you. Like, I feel like you, you've got the whole package. You look great. You're with Elena. So you must be a good guy, but I don't trust you and I'm not, I can't connect to you. And mm -mm. it's true. Yeah, he struggled. That, that that sat with him. Yeah. And that is literally one of the guiding principles for him, I'm sure, for the last five years, four mm. years. Yeah. I ask each one of my guests three questions. Oh, great. I don't know what they are, so I'm excited. I know. Yeah. I know. Sometimes I prep people and sometimes <laughs> I don't, but I was like, I'm not prepping you. Perfect. Um, the first one, what needs healing in yourself, in your sphere, uh, in the world? You can talk about what needs healing right now. Mm. I think... And myself, I still struggle a lot with self-worth. Oh. Yeah, it's one of these that things. That blows my mind. Well, I, I get that. I appreciate that. Thank you. And I think, uh, you know, there's a, a Times article recently that someone um, told me about that said that the people that do the biggest things in life are people that have a chip on their shoulder and think that they can change the world. And I've kind of always been one of those people and not to say I'm, you know, destined to change the world, but I've always felt like I could change the world. But uh, you have already. Well, I appreciate that. And I feel like I have a lot more to do. I really, <laughs> I really do. It's just who I am. I get I'm it. driven. Um, and I'm, and I feel purposeful. You know, I think a big part also of this work is like, what is your purpose, right? Men are looking for that they sometimes they don't realize that but you know they get caught up in work and things that they have to do to provide but they're not happy they're not satisfied so of course they're looking for that elsewhere and right. you know, it becomes unhealthy so i've found over the last probably since we started collaborating really so the, you know 10 12 years ago now mm. that i started to move into more of my purpose of what i wanted to do and how i wanted to share and so as I've done that, it's just been energizing. I feel more aligned than I ever have in my life. Uh, I feel like I'm purposeful in my work, whether that's with Flavor Pill and the things I do there or yeah. with every man. Yeah. And even in my relationship with my beautiful wife, Gemma, like I'm, I'm purposeful on how I, how I step out in the world. And I'm still my own worst critic, you know, <laughs> I'm learning to be less the judge and more the witness, yeah. you know, so I can ease up. I'm learning to slow the fuck down, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm an amped up alpha male New Yorker and I always want to go, go, go. And this has been a lot of personal work on myself that's been, um, you know, contributed by um, or the help facilitated through every man and through my wife and through the practices that I've learned through you with yoga. Um, 
So yeah, I'm still working through that. I'm, you know, I think that's something that maybe one day I'll just come to complete peace with myself and, and really I think we get older and that happens. I think that's, I think like when I'm like, yeah, 98. No, silly. <laughs> no. My, my hundredth birthday, maybe. No, yeah, I, think I think sooner. I think it'll, it's already easing up. I I'm feel. feeling more comfortable with who I am. I'm more comfortable on my skin. And I'm learning to be like my current work statement. We have work statements in every man. My current work. Wait, tell us what the work statement means. Well, it means like, what's the edge for you right now? What's going to push you forward to be more the person you want to be? And what's something that's an edge? It's, it's, it's not something you've already achieved, but it's something that you know, if you can reach that, that it's going to help you be more this full spectrum human. So my edge and my work statement, right, is that I am a team player. So I'm so used to being a lone wolf and being the captain of the team and going out and, you know, the CEO of the company and I'm going to save the day and it's all, it's all on my shoulders. And now I'm learning how to be a team player. I, Flavor Pill was acquired last year. I'm part of a 350 person company. There's people in the room that are way smarter than me at the things that they're best at and learning how to, you know, navigate that and not be the captain and not have to also, you know, be the star of the, the of the show all the time. It's been really humbling and powerful for me and it's the same thing with every man you know um so i'm growing into that more and more and i think the when i get out of my own way i'll get to that place where i can really start to fully love and right. and feel that self-worth and it's it's certainly growing on a, on a you know day-to-day -day basis right so the second question is what is your favorite view my favorite view Yes. Wow. Okay. That is definitely the first time I've been asked that. I get, I get a lot of crazy, crazy answers to this. So <laughs> yeah. I think my favorite view is a sun set. <sighs> Anywhere was, in particular? I was debating between sunrise and sunset. Mm -hmm. um, I love them both. I was going through old photos of mine in you know last 30 years when you actually printed photos and yes. got shoe boxes and same i was going through all of them because we're moving out of our storage unit and i have hundreds and hundreds of sunset photos oh. from you know ecuador and all through latin america and um europe and just mm. you know travels throughout the united mm, states mm, california mm. um i just love there's something so tranquil and peaceful and epic yeah. and the colors and the time of the day, you know, that sort of magic hour moment. Totally. It's pretty enchanting. And before all, even starting meditation and like my own personal growth and, you know, sort of spiritual journey that Started always felt very spiritual to me, Yeah, yeah. you know, even just, you know, just slowing down and watching that sun it's an event. Move away and yeah, lap around again, and again and again. And it's really us. Yeah, we're the ones who are moving. Actually, That's great, great. Thank which you. Which I love. Yes, at what fifty-eight thousand mi uh, miles per hour, yeah. right? We're flying through here. We're on a, as Joshua Onisco always says, we're on a rock, spinning through the space. Can you imagine? <laughs> right now, the last question. What does prayer mean to you? Mm. It's interesting. I have never been a prayer person per mm. se. Mm. Um, I didn't grow up in a religious family in that way. I always thought prayer was a little heavy handed. And more recently, I have started to pray. Um, and it's something that it's really powerful and auspicious and when I can give myself the space to slow down enough and connect to that higher source and that energy, um, whatever it is, whatever you want to call it, I don't I pretend to have the answer. Right. Um, so I think it's just a sense of like reverence and um, fully letting go of you know, all of the, the noise and the drama and the ego and just really trying to connect to that, that source that is, the isness of it all. Yes. Um, and, you know, have a conversation with it or yeah. 
connect to it and it's in us right i mean i think that is all in us um so yeah it's interesting prayer is something that i'm just starting to dabble in so i appreciate you bringing that up i think i'm gonna put a little bit more attention to it in my morning rituals and my my evenings um before we go to bed because yeah. I, I, it's something and my wife grew up as a uh, irish catholic going to church and she's big into prayer um and she was actually the one that's sort of introduced me to it as a as a oh. concept so um how sweet is I will that continue to to uh you know kind of open up to it good. again and again good I love you. I love you too. This has been wonderful. It's been wonderful. Such a um, such a pleasure to walk down memory lane a little bit, it and also is. to just celebrate you. Yeah, and I want to give you a shout out too, girl, because like this has been <laughs> girl. An, girl, come on now. <laughs> this has been an amazing journey, and like yeah, yeah, I've seen you grow as a teacher and as a woman and as a steward and um, as a leader. You know, and like you had that beautiful little studio out in Soho and mm. you know it was like the cool kid yoga class to go to <laughs> <laughs> and uh you've done remarkable work in the world I mean what you've offered to others and the, the ways in which you've touched lives and really helped transform people it's the real deal and you continue to do it and the the, the way you show up and are constantly creating. I'm always just overwhelmed. Like when I get your newsletter, I'm like, damn sister, you are <laughs> got it all going on, but it doesn't feel like you're rushing it or feels like you're just trying to prove a point. It's actually all really meaningful, whether it's yeah. the books or the oils or the workshops mm -hmm. or the podcast now, uh, what, what this podcast is feels like it's like really happening for you. Yeah. You know, it, it's my favorite. Oh, um, good. It's my favorite little outlet right now. Yeah. So thank you. So thank big you. up to you too. You. It's been amazing to see and amazing to be a co-collaborator with you. You know, I, I mean, you are my number one. I whenever it's like, okay, we gotta do yoga class. Who do we got? Word. It's Elena. First, <laughs> you're the first text I send. And thank then, you. you know, I go down the list, and thank you. I'm looking forward to to many more collaborations. Let's keep going, and let's yes. do some some every man, every yes. woman, yes, yoga. I'm keen for Whatever that. It is. I'm keen to do some of the women's work. I'll talk to Gemma about it and see what's going on. Yeah, we just had Esther Perel come to our, as she Ooh. was our, the first woman ever to come to one of our leadership trainings. So we have a leadership training called Melt Men's uh, Emotional That's Leadership Training. That's the document training. that I was working Got on. It. That's the one. Yeah. And so Esther, or Esther, <laughs> wow. um, came and she's a big advocate of our work. And we're yeah. really proud of that because she's obviously such a heavy hitter and so legit. and So beyond. Um, and she's really become a supporter and advocate. So we really, we really are um, grateful for that. And yeah, that's part of the idea, right? Is that we get powerful women like, like her and yourself yeah. to say, Hey, let's, let's try to cross, um, cross these bridges together yeah. and work together and, yeah. and use the, the superpowers that you have to, you know, further and engage and enlighten our guys and vice versa. You know, how can you learn from us as we grow? Cause we need, we need your support too in that way. We need yeah. to know we're, we're on the right track. Yeah. Well, I'll be sure to keep in touch and keep going with you because this has been important to me, downright yeah. important. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Elena. Love you. Love you so much. Love you.